Hello, I'm David Griffiths, and much as I might sound like an Oxford Don, I'm not. I got my law degree at an American university just like you are doing. Now on to the taught speech, intentional torts. First of all, we'll start with them. Um, the prima facie case for an intentional tort is the defendant's intentional conduct invaded a legally protected interest of the plaintiff, causing harm to the plaintiff. Defendant's conduct must be a voluntary bodily movement. Speech is included in this. So, if Johnson has an epileptic fit and his flailing hand hits Williams, there is no voluntary movement, so no intentional tort. Here that would be battery. If the result of defendant's voluntary movement, that is the invasion of plaintiff's legally protected interest, is intended by defendant or substantially certain to occur, then we have the necessary intent for an intentional tort. Compare this with the situation where defendant's action creates the foreseeable risk of harm to plaintiff. That's negligent or at most reckless, but not intentional. Be aware that defendant only has to intend the invasion of plaintiff's legally protected interest. He does not have to intend the injuries a plaintiff might incur as a result. The majority of states hold that minors and incompetents are responsible for the intentional torts they commit. As in criminal law, the notion of transferred intent applies to certain intentional torts. If defendant intends to injure Williams, but inadvertently injures Johnson, defendant's intent to injure Williams is transferred to Johnson's injury. Transferred intent only applies to the following torts. Assault, battery, trespass to land, trespass to chattels, and false imprisonment. Defendant may intend one of these torts on Williams, but accomplish a different tort on Johnson. For example, defendant intends to assault Williams by throwing a stone just over her head, scaring her. Johnson, unbeknownst to, def to defendant, is hiding in a tree behind Williams.